Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you join us today, and I want to welcome every one of you to Kids Connection. I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait for you to be here at Kids Connection again. But until then, I hope you are still being good boys and girls at home. Last week, we celebrated Easter, and we even had communion with Pastor James. What an amazing experience that was. It was very emotional remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, for me and for you. Now this week, we're going to continue the story after Easter. But before we get there, we're going to sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. And it's amazing. Sing with us. Wow, that was such a fun song. Did you have fun? I did. And thank you for singing with us. It's always good to know that you enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program right now. We ask that you be with them, be with mom and dad, and be with us as we worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have your mom or your dad or your grandparents baked bread at home for you. Yummy! That smell of fresh bread is awesome! In our mission story today, we're going to hear a story where people use fresh baked bread to share the love of Jesus with others. Let's watch our mission story. In the still, dark, and early mornings, flour and water meet. They rise with yeast and are shoved in an oven to be transformed by heat. The aroma fills the air, sending an irresistible invitation to mouth-watering delights. One by one, people come to order, to socialize, and laugh. Every day, people of all ages and different ethnicities line up at this bakery, eager to savor delicious bread. Making bread takes time and patience. It takes loving hands to mix ingredients and press them together until the dough is ready to rise and grow. So it is with people. It takes time and patience to cultivate trust and friendship, to warm their lives and invite them to follow Jesus. At the Trapezia Global Mission Urban Center of Influence in Bulgaria, staff members offer visitors more than food. Here, people find room to interact and participate in a variety of courses and activities. As they make new friends, visitors are invited to become volunteers themselves. This way, they can give back and help others too. Dimitur is a regular volunteer who found purpose in Trapezia by tutoring math. There are good people here, and I developed good relationships with different people. So I want to give my best to others. I feel a strong desire to learn more about God and the Bible. I have this idea that I have to help, and if I can, I'm going to do it. I am not a math teacher. I'm an engineer. But here, I help kids with math. Dimitur travels 10 kilometers every day. Sometimes he comes on foot. He started as a customer, then he became a volunteer, and now he is a baptized Seventh-day Adventist. Like Dimitur, many people who come to Trapezia find the bread of life. The owners of Trapezia have seen how centers of influence like this can work as a platform to engage the community and form friendships God gave us this place to keep us close to people. God showed us that we needed a place where people felt accepted and at home. That's why we established a bakery, because it smells like home. In Bulgaria, people eat a lot of bread. This is how Christ worked. He was close to people. He offered them the bread of life. He healed them and took care of them. And we want to do the same. The leaders at Trapezia invite you to pray for this growing group of new believers. Please pray for this urban center of influence and many others around the world that find creative ways to introduce people to Jesus. Thank you for supporting urban centers of influence through Global Mission. Now as always, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above and donate to the missionaries. Now our offering this Saturday is going to help places like the bakery so they can continue to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, how have you been doing? What are you doing at home lately? Are you enjoying a new way of school or spending some time with mom or dad or grandparents? I know that some of you don't go to school yet, but in a way, we're all experiencing something different. Just remember something, you're always on my mind. I miss you guys. And I am so happy that we get to spend this time at Kids Connection every week. Don't forget to come back to the Kids Connection page later in the week and check out additional material just for kids. We have new videos for children's worship, fun activity pages, and much more. After you watch today's video, just scroll down to the bottom of this page where you can see a lot more to do. 
Now, last week we learned in our Sabbath school the story of Easter and that Jesus died and rose again. Today we're going to learn what happened after that, after his resurrection. But before we get to that, I think my friend Claudio is here. It was his birthday last week, and let's see what he has to say. Come on. Well, hello, boys and girls. Here, I want you to meet my friend Claudio. Hi, Claudio. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thanks for coming here today. I hear that you had a birthday party last week. Yes, I had a birthday party. Oh, that's that birthdays are, are the best. Did you get a lot of presents? Yes, lots of presents. Good, good. I'm so excited, so happy for you. Happy birthday, by the way. What did you get? Lots of presents. Oh, really? Okay, okay. And and what was your favorite? Mm, I it was a soccer ball. Oh, really? Oh, soccer is my favorite. I love soccer. Do you have your ball with you? Yes, I do. Can I see it? No. No? Why? Because it's mine. Oh, I know it's yours. I know it's yours. But I, I, I just want to see it because it was your favorite and I want to see it. No. Oh, come on, Claudio. Let me see. Boys and girls, do you want to see his soccer ball? Just a little bit. Can we see it just for a little bit? Mm, okay. But this mine. Oh, I know. I understand. It's your ball. Okay. Do you need help? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. He doesn't need help. I think you do need help. No. Whoa. That is such a nice ball. Can I touch? No. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. It's mine. I, I know it's yours, but I, I like to see. I like to kick the ball. I like to bounce the ball a little bit. Can I do that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, Claudio. Okay, but you know, it's it's much better when we play soccer with two people. No, uh, but it's mine. It's. I understand. It's your ball. It's your ball, and, and it's a nice ball. Mm. Claudio, can, can we try to play together? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Okay, Claudio, I, I, I know. I'm not going to take the ball from you. I just want to play with you because I like soccer. No, I don't think so. Yes, Claudio. I promise I'm not going to take it from you. Promise? Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Claudio. Okay. Okay, okay. So you kick it to me, and I'll kick it back to you, and I'll hit it back to you, okay? Here we go. Oh. Whoa. It is such a nice ball. Thank you. Here we Here. go. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Claudio. Oh. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Okay, Claudio, I'm going to hit it to you. You hit your head, okay? Okay. Oh, cool. That was nice. Here, let me try it. Ah, ah good catch. Good catch. See, Claudio, wasn't it nice to play together? I guess. Yeah, it's always nice to play soccer together because... You know, when you play by yourself, you have to run after the ball. You have to chase it. Sometimes you kick the ball far away. And when you play with someone, you kick that ball to the person, and the person kicks back to you. That wasn't that bad, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't take your ball, like I promised. Yeah, I guess you didn't. Yes, Claudio. Thank you for letting me play with you. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Bye. It was good seeing you, Claudio. Bye-bye. I'll see you later. Okay. Say bye-bye to the boys and girls. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. 
Whoa, did you guys see that? Claudio didn't want to share his soccer ball with me. He thought I was going to take his ball. Have you ever seen anybody who doesn't like to share things or that knows something so good and they don't want to share with anybody? In today's lesson, we're going to learn something that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. Something that we need to share with everyone. And I hope you don't do like Claudio. Keep it to yourself. I hope that today's lesson you shared with at least one person this week. Just one. And now, let's sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for all the boys and girls, and moms and dads who are watching this program today. Bless them, keep them safe, and thank you so much because you died on the cross for us. Help us to share this love with others, with at least one person this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. 
and share the lesson you're about to hear with at least one person this week. We have a lot of things happening at our Kids Connection page, so make sure you come back this week and check out additional materials on the bottom of this page, graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. We have crafts, we have safe games for kids, and children's worship new videos. And all this is specially made for you. I hope to see you again next week for another Kids Connection program. Thanks for watching today. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you all had a good week. I want to tell you a story today, and it is about Jesus. Do you remember that we talked about Jesus coming as a king, riding into Jerusalem? I have put in this egg some symbols of the ride into Jerusalem. The people honored Jesus as the Messiah as he came into Jerusalem. He rode on a donkey like a king, and they threw palm branches down on his path. The Bible says in Matthew 21 that the multitudes that went before and followed after cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And after he came into after he came into Jerusalem, one of his disciples betrayed him. He asked the priests and the leaders if they would give him money to put in the treasury if he told them where Jesus would be. And the Bible says, He said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him to you. And they said they would give him 30 pieces of silver. From that time on, he looked for a time to betray him. And then they went to their last supper. Now back in those days, and still today, the Jews, the Jews practiced Passover. Well, Jesus went into Jerusalem and he found a place to celebrate Passover. Passover was a time when the Jewish people remembered how they were brought out of Egypt by God. At the Passover, they would have had bread, bread. At the Passover, they would have had bread. And they would have had some grape juice in a cup. Now, Jesus Bless the bread and the drink. And he served it to them. He said, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many sins. At the Passover dinner, they also had something that they called bitter herbs. This was to be a symbol of the bitterness of the cup that Jesus asked to have passed from him. He said, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, after they had their meal, they went out singing a hymn, and they went to a garden where there were flowers and trees, and there Jesus suffered much, and he was comforted by an angel. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, he prayed earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. And then after he had suffered in the garden and the angel had comforted him, Jesus was arrested. His heart was breaking. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. 
Jesus was whipped and beaten during his trial. And the governor, the governor's soldiers, put a crown of thorns on his head. I don't know if you can see the sharp thorns on there. They put it on his head and they pushed it down. They whipped him with whips. In Matthew 27, it says, and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand, and they bowed their knee and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they took him out to the cross, and they took some nails, and they pounded the nails into his hands and his feet. The soldiers that were there took some dice and they threw them. They were gambling for Jesus' clothes. And then when he was on the cross, They took a spear and stabbed him in the side. Jesus suffered much for our, our sins. Luke says, And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in the middle. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, unto thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he died. They took Jesus' body down from the cross and they wrapped it in a strip of cloth. They would have rounded around his body. They would have covered his face. And they buried him inside of a big rock. And they rolled a stone over the hole in the rock. And that was where they buried him. The Bible says, And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of a rock. Hewn means that he cut it from the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. And on the third day after his death, Jesus arose from the dead. He left the tomb and visited many believers showing the prints in his hands and in his feet. So when they went to the tomb and went to look in it, it was empty. And the angel said, Fear ye not, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. And lastly, Jesus has asked us to go tell everybody about Jesus and how he rose from the dead. And this is where we find the story in our Holy Bible. We can talk to our friends about Jesus and tell them how much Jesus loves them. Now, I want to tell you or show you your memory verse this week. Now, I've been showing you the motions only a couple of times, so watch me for the first time and then see if you can do it the second time. God said that every knee should bow to the name of Jesus and everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and bring glory to God the Father. That comes from Philippians in your Bible, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Let's try and say that again. God said that every knee should bow to the name of Jesus, and everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and bring glory to 
God the Father. Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Let's try that one more time and you see if you can say it with me. God said that every knee should bow to the name of Jesus and everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, I hope that you have a good week. Let me show you your craft. This will be your craft for this week. It says, go and tell about Jesus. You can decorate it with stickers or stamps or markers. And then maybe go ahead and hang a piece of yarn on it. You can use it around your neck or hang it on a doorknob. Parents, this is what it will look like when you download it from the website and all the directions are on there. You can also actually do the directions with the pasta if you'd like to. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you next week. Go and tell everybody about Jesus.